why you will never get in shape. You're probably a young guy who wants to build himself an attractive body. You want to bring yourself into a position in your life where you can look at yourself in front of the mirror and feel great. Feel like, man, I'm proud of what I see in front of the mirror. I'm able to wake up every single morning. And I'm like, you know what? I love where my life is going. I love how I look in front of the mirror. I love my lifestyle. I feel healthy. I have a bunch of energy. But until you understand these concepts, you're never going to get yourself in shape. You've tried all the diets. You tried all the workout routines. You tried all these techniques that a bunch of these fitness gurus tell you to do, whether it's dirty bulking, taking a bunch of creatine, even taking trend, taking these steroids, filling your body up, filling your mind up with a bunch of information that's not helping you and keeping you in the position that you're in in your life right now. And it's just making you stressed out. It's making you doubt yourself and your ability of even making an attractive body for yourself. And it just makes you realize, man, what even works? You don't even know what to listen to. I'm going to show you exactly why you haven't been able to get in shape. And I'm going to tell you exactly what I did to help me finally build the attractive body that I've always wanted to build my entire life. So why should you even listen to me in the first place? Who is this random guy on the screen telling you this advice? Well, a few years ago, I was 115 pounds, scrawny, insecure, the skinniest kid you can think of in every single room that he walked in. I wasn't respected by a bunch of people. I really wasn't taken seriously, right? And I couldn't really defend myself because of how skinny I was, how small I was. I was very afraid to even stand up for myself. I had no social confidence on speaking with people. I had no confidence with myself to be able to go after the things that I truly wanted because I never really accomplished anything in my life. Until now, today, I was able to build myself an aesthetic, athletic, attractive physique at 165 pounds in the span of four years. Simply by understanding these concepts and doing these things I'm about to tell you right now. I can almost guarantee you, by the end of this video, you will not have to watch another video about building an attractive body, getting your dream body, because I promise you right now, I'm going to explain to you everything that you need to do, and it's going to help you get to that result that you're trying to get to in your life. So let's start from the beginning. What is the basic reason that traps you into this cycle of not building your dream body? What is it? I'm going to explain to you right now. And it's very big. Most people think it starts physically. It starts with what you see. It starts with your mental. You haven't developed a healthy mindset. We're going to put with the red marker right here, an X with a brain and squiggly stuff inside. This is negativity. This is like your mindset right now. What I mean that you haven't developed a healthy mindset before you can even achieve anything physically in your life, money, an attractive body in this scenario, you need to first think about it. You need to have a thought before something can actually happen in the real world. Nobody gets in shape by just doing, 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 doing. Somebody gets in shape because they had a vision in their mind of them being the person who is in shape and they started taking action from there. They started creating a plan from there. They started to realize okay, in order for me to achieve this dream, I need to start developing and thinking in a different way. I'll explain to you in a bit right now. You haven't developed a healthy mindset. What is a healthy mindset? Think about this. How does a person who's in shape think? What's the thought process like? How do they move in their day-to-day -day life? I can almost guarantee you, number one, a healthy person is not in their mind battling, oh, I gotta eat these chips. Oh my gosh, I gotta drink that soda. They've already developed in their head that, you know what, chips, soda, that's not part of my diet. I don't eat that, right? They're confident in their words. I don't do this. I don't smoke. I don't drink alcohol. For example, if you're somebody who doesn't wanna drink alcohol, I don't eat junk food that lowers my energy. 
they're already confident in their head on how they're going to move through their day to day. You, on the other hand, you're still trying to say to yourself, oh, I'm trying to get rid of soda. I'm trying to get rid of unhealthy food. I'm trying to get rid of this habit. You see, you're not really confident in yourself. Think about it. If somebody tells you, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. You're going to ask yourself, bro, are you even really confident that you can do this? That is what you're basically doing to yourself every single time you say, I'm trying. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. You need to start asking yourself, how does a healthy person, healthy person think in their day to day? How do they move? You're going to start to realize, okay, well, a healthy person gets up and moves in their day. They don't sit on their ass doing nothing with their life. They get up and they get some exercise in the morning, most likely. They get up and they drink water. They don't drink soda, right? When you can start to ask yourself how a healthy person thinks, now you're going to start to realize, okay, how do I need to move through my day to day? You start to ask yourself, what is the greatest version of me? The greatest version. So we're going to put a check with a trophy I don't know we got something a representation of a trophy All right a trophy what does the best version of you think like how do they live in their day to day write this down on a piece of paper if you can say it out loud if that works best for you then do that write it down somewhere if that works best for you you just need to start getting clear on how that best version of you thinks on how that best version of you lives in their day-to-day -day basis. When you can start fixing up the mental, your mindset, how you see the world when it comes to being healthy, now you can start working on the things you need to do outside in the physical world to help you get in your amazing body that you want to get into. I almost froze there for a second. But that's the first thing. You need to start developing a healthy mindset. And later on, I'm gonna to explain to you how to get that healthy mindset. But this is just the first problem that you're dealing with. We're gonna get into the second problem right now. Why you haven't been able to build that dream body that you've always wanted to build. And yes, I have a giant whiteboard. This style has been blowing up on YouTube and I was like, I gotta come back on YouTube. I wanna get my knowledge out there. And I've been growing a lot in these past few months ever since I posted on my YouTube. So I got a lot of information to help you guys on and I promise you right now, it's going to be some good information. So second thing, let's write this down. You're not open to new ways of living you're not open to new ways of living what i mean by this you've always heard somebody say i want to get in shape this year and the person who doesn't even go to the gym the person who hasn't even tried to diet out is the one who's very confident that they know everything that it takes to get themselves in the greatest shape possible right so you're basically closing your mentality. You're closing your things to new information out there. The number one mistake why it was hard for me in the beginning to even make any sort of progress in my life when it came to fitness, when it came to building my dream body was simply because I thought I knew it all. I thought everything that I know about fitness was the right way. Whatever somebody told me, whatever somebody said online was wrong. It was BS. They don't know what they're talking about. Even though if they were bigger than me, even though if they were working out harder than me, they were working out longer than me. I said, bro, I know more than you, right? And this way of thinking is going to keep you trapped in this type of cage that the only thing you're going to really use is the information that you know, and you're limiting yourself to greater potentials, to greater possibilities of making more progress. So you need to break this ego, the ego, right? I'm a psychology student. I study psychology, the ego. Now ego is not a bad thing. But your ego doesn't like to be proven wrong. Your ego does not like to feel like it doesn't know what it's talking about. It always wants to be right. It wants to put you in a position where you're your best self, keeping your ego alive, right?
But the only way you'll be able to finally build the body that you've always wanted to build, to finally become the person that you've always wanted to become, you need to learn to drop your ego, right? And this doesn't mean like thinking of yourself less. Be more open-minded. Realize there's people out there that know more than you. There's people out there who've been doing this longer than you. Even me, who's been training for five years, I ask people in my gym who have been training longer than me for advice because I may feel like I know everything, but the reality is I don't know everything when it comes to working out, developing a healthy lifestyle. There's new information every single day. There's new techniques. There's new things that can make my life a hundred times easier that I don't know, right? But if I close my mind off to the information that I know now, yeah, it's gotten me far, but it won't be able to help me get further. It won't be, it won't be able to help me develop myself into a greater version in my life when I get older. So later on, I'm going to give you a technique on how you can drop your ego and allow yourself to think that in a more open-minded way. You see, I almost just froze there as well. We're just getting some glitches in life. I don't know what it is, but yeah, that's the second thing. You are not open to new ways of living your life when it comes to health. We're about to go into the third. It's three things that have been holding you back. Three things that's been holding you back from actually building that dream body. And also comment down below if you like this new style of video, because honestly, I really do enjoy it. I love just writing on a whiteboard and teaching, giving you guys the knowledge, the sauce to building that attractive body and making you look better than every single guy in every room that you walk in. Here we go. Number three, no sort of driving factor no drive no reason why you don't have a reason why you want to get in shape you don't have something that pushes you every single day to pick yourself up to live this amazing life and become the great version of yourself that you have the potential to become you're just basically operating on just like how you're feeling you're basically operating on how your emotions are. And when you begin to do that, when you're like, oh, I don't really feel like it today, you're more likely not gonna do the things that you need to do to help you get your dream body, to help you become the version of yourself that you've always wanted to become. You need a driving factor. Something that gives you a reason to pick yourself up and become the best version of you, right? And it's personal to every single person. Nobody has the same reason why. You have your own life. You've been going through your own stages, your own events, your own struggles, and you've overcome them. You have to find a reason why now in this current moment in your life, you want to get in shape, right? And you cannot be no generic type of reason why. We're gonna go into later in the video how to develop a very strong why that will allow you to finally pick yourself up Get that drive that you need to change your life, to change your physique, to finally become the version that you've always wanted to become in your life, right? But this right here, you have no driving factor. It's almost like you're a car. You're a car and you have no gas inside you. If you have no gas inside you, the car really can't move that much. It's going to move a little bit, but it won't move that much because when you don't have any sort of gas on the highway, for example, you're kind of screwed and it's just going to be a hundred times harder for you to move that car. So once you develop a driving factor, you will begin to realize how much easier getting in shape actually really is. But those are the three things. Number one, you haven't developed a healthy mentality. Number two, you are not open to new ways of living. And number three, you don't have a big driving factor why you want to get in shape. Now, Let's get into the actual framework on how you can finally get yourself in shape. We're gonna start off with developing healthy thinking. How to think healthy. We finally got the green marker here, so everything's gonna be good. <laughs> how to think healthy. All right, how to think healthy. Number one. Ask yourself, what does a healthy person 
a healthy person not do? First question, what does a healthy person not do? And I'm going to give myself a little break to get my water. I was about to say H2O. See, sometimes when it gets very late, you can't really think that well, but we're doing our best here, so bear with me. And also, if you're not drinking a gallon of water, what are you doing? Hydrate yourself. That's another thing I'm going to teach you later on how to get yourself in shape. But ask yourself, what does a healthy, I also, I forgot to put healthy person, but what, ask yourself, what does a healthy person not do? You're gonna get a bunch of ideas. One of them being a healthy person does not have any sort of uncontrollable desires to just stuff their face up with a bunch of unhealthy food. I'm pretty sure, and I could almost be 99% sure, a healthy person is disciplined with what food they put in their body. Is disciplined and they're conscious of exactly what they need to do to their day to day. What type of habits they need to do with their moving, with their cardio, with their lifting weights, what days are they going to be lifting? They're organized, right? So if you think of the opposite, what do they not do? Now it becomes 100 times easier to know what they do. So for example, a healthy person does not randomly eat junk food they don't randomly just eat junk food why because they already know what foods they're putting in their body the foods that they're already putting in their body is already enough for them to feel great is already enough for them to have energy and is already enough for them to help build that dream body that they want the only reason why somebody randomly eats junk food and i'm going to be 100 percent real with you right now is simply because you probably did not eat all day you were probably very unorganized with the food, your diet that you were actually going to eat for that day. You had no sort of plan on what time you're going to eat your meals, which resulted into you just eating junk food, right? What's the number one time that everybody is most likely to eat very unhealthy food? At nighttime, when you have no sort of discipline, no sort of drive, no sort of control, you just do whatever you want to do. That is why most diets fail, because when you try a very strong a uh, very weird type of diet, right? And it's not really something that you're into, something that you're used to, you're gonna result to almost eating a bunch of junk food in your night, right? Because you can't handle it. And it's like, bro, I need food, right? So these people who are trying these vegan diets, these people who are trying these very like low calorie diets, there's no way they're gonna survive. You're not gonna survive trying to do that. You're gonna result into you eating unhealthy foods. And most people don't really talk about that, that they eat the food that's usually unhealthy simply because of their diet. But that's the number one thing. Ask yourself, what does, a un, what does a healthy person not do? The second thing, how do you think more healthy? Ask yourself, what would the best version of you do? of you do what would they do whenever you're faced with some sort of challenge whenever you're having a moment where you don't feel like working out whenever you're having a moment where you want to eat unhealthy food or you're very unorganized you'd rather just be lazy scroll on your phone whatever it is ask yourself what will your best version of yourself do you're gonna know what the right decision is to make, right? Usually whenever you make the wrong decision so many times, you start doubting yourself. You start reminding yourself, man, maybe I'm not gonna be able to do this. Maybe I'm not capable of finally achieving the body that I've always want. And it puts you in this cycle. It's like, man, I can't even make the right decision in my life. How can I even trust my word to be able to build a body that I've always wanted? You need to start asking yourself, what would the best version of you do? And it will get very clear for you. So I'll give you an example. If you're in a scenario where you're out in a party and there's a bunch of unhealthy food, 
a bunch of fried food that really is just gonna kill your energy that's really not gonna help you on your journey and you know by you eating that unhealthy food you're gonna feel like crap later on in your day or in the next morning when you wake up right so what do you do ask yourself pause for a second I'm like, okay there's a bunch of unhealthy food here what can I do right now I'm very hungry okay what would the best version of me do okay you know instead of eating a bunch of fried food is there a way that I can get food after the party? Or is there something that's roasted? Or is there something that's not fried? That's a little bit more leaner, right? You start making conscious decisions on better options than just going with the flow where everybody else is going. Because I promise you, if you follow the crowd of what everybody else is doing, you're gonna start making decisions that you never really wanted to make in your own life, right? Those are basically the two most important things what it takes to develop yourself and to think healthier. Right? Ask yourself, what does a healthy person not do? And don't do it at all. <laughs> and number two, ask yourself, what would the best version of you do in any scenario where you're faced in some sort of stress? Right? So that's the first framework on you have to see yourself as a healthy person. You need to start developing yourself into I am a healthy person. One of the most powerful wor words in the Bible was I am. You always hear God saying, I am this, I am that. You need to start saying to yourself, I am a healthy person who is on a journey developing a better physique. I am a healthy person who does not eat junk food. I am a healthy person who does not fill his body up with a bunch of drugs, with a bunch of vape or smoking or alcohol uncontrollably. I am a person who has discipline, right? You need to keep repeating this to yourself and realize you are this person. You have this power inside you. Nobody is going to take this power away from you. It is within you, right? You just need to be able to open your eyes and see, okay, I have this power. I can be this person. People who have amazing bodies, it's not only a select few. Every single person on this planet, I truly believe, can actually have an amazing body. Not everybody can be a billionaire, but I can almost guarantee you every person on this planet can be healthy in some way, right? So that was the first step. How to think healthy. The next step to finally getting your dream body is how to be more open-minded. How to be more open-minded. How to be more open-minded. And I'm not really a great artist, so if you're expecting me to draw like some cool pictures, I'll do my best, but I kind of failed in drawing in middle school, so don't blame me on this one. But how to be more open-minded. Number one, accept the fact you don't know everything. In order for you to build your dream body, in order for you to finally get into the shape that you've always wanted to get into, you need to accept the fact you don't know everything. You don't know everything when it comes to training. You don't know everything when it comes to eating healthy. You don't know everything when it comes to living a healthy lifestyle. Why is this important? When you're able to be open-minded, now you open yourself to a bunch of new ways you can grow in this specific area in your life. When you constantly say to yourself, I know everything. What he's saying to me is not true. I don't care what he says, I'm gonna do what I do. You're gonna continue getting the same results over and over again. You're gonna be in this cycle of blaming the world that, oh man, the world just doesn't like me. Oh man, you know what? Like, I'm just unlucky. You're basically saying that you have no control over this. When in reality, you do have control over this. You do have control of the information that you learn. You do have control of you building the body that you've always wanted to build. And I can almost tell you this right now. When I decided to be more open-minded, I didn't feel lesser of myself. That's the number one thing a lot of people nowadays on social media try to make it seem like. If you're open-minded, if you learn from people who are more knowledgeable than you, then somehow you're dumb, somehow you're stupid, somehow you're not as, as high of yourself as you are. When in reality, when you're able to be open-minded and learn from more and more people, you actually make yourself better. You actually give yourself an opportunity to grow in so many different ways that you never thought you can grow in. 
you have to accept the fact that you don't know everything and the reality is you just don't and it's okay i don't know everything about how to fix a car i'm not gonna walk around and pretend like i know how to fix a car let me learn from somebody who actually knows how to fix cars i know for a fact i don't know everything about building a billion dollar business online yeah i may have made money from online hobbies that i'm doing currently right now but i haven't made a billion dollars i need to learn from somebody who's made a billion dollars and it's not gonna make my life worse by me admitting i don't know everything as a matter of fact it's gonna make your life a hundred times better right that's the first step accept the fact that you don't know everything number two learn from people with results i re i specifically said people with results with results there's a reason why because there's a lot of people who don't work out and they're going to tell you this is how you need to do it they don't have the progress unfortunately we live in a world nowadays where you need to have progress you need to have results to claim that you know what you're talking about the reason why i'm being able to be so confident what i'm saying is because I literally showed you with your own eyes, I went from being 115 pounds, skinny, scrawny, insecure, weak, to 165 pounds, uh, athletic, aesthetic, and strong and lean in the span of four years. And even at one point, I even got in a very high body fat percentage and I was 175 pounds and I lost 15 pounds of fat in the span of six months, right? So I've actually made the results. So, right, so I know what I'm talking about when I say, you need to learn from people from results because all the advice I got from is from people who have built amazing bodies. It's from people who've been working out longer than me, who actually have results because they already know what they're doing. They got the results. So if you can learn from people like that, whether it's online, even watching a video of me explaining to you how to build an amazing body, you're going to grow 100 times faster because now you're being given the correct things that you need to do in your journey to get those results that you've been looking for. Accept the fact that you don't know everything and learn from people with results. And finally, number three, never think you know it all. The moment you believe that you know everything, there's no more learning is when you stop growing. Obviously, there's gonna come a point when you turn 80 years old and you and you and you've been working out for so long so I, you know I, I've, I've learned so much but even then there's still a lot more to learn right there's still a lot more to learn and, and it's not a bad thing life is a continuous journey of growing life is a continuous journey of learning life is a continuous journey of developing yourself you never truly become the greatest ultimate version of yourself that has everything figured out there's still going to be areas in your life that you're gonna have to grow in right so it's better if you adopt Never think that you know it all because I made that mistake. Even with my progress right now, I used to think I know it all, right? By the way, how I'm training, what I'm doing, I know it all. Until I realized, you know, I kind of don't know it all. I still make mistakes. <laughs> There's still mistakes that I make in my training that, man, you know what? Me doing that exercise in that specific form, right? I may think I'm doing it the correct way, but somebody who's been working out longer than me tells me, you know, you've been doing it wrong this whole time. Try this. Do this instead. I'm like, you're right. I feel a hundred times better doing it. So I move around like, I don't think I know it all. I'm open-minded and, and you're never going to lose anything by learning from others. Matter of fact, you're going to gain. Every time you're going to gain something. As long as this person is not negative and is trying to bring you down, listen to them. They're going to help you in your journey. So those are the first two things. You must begin to develop that healthy mentality. We explain what you need to do. You need to start asking yourself, what does a healthy person not do? And what does a person, a healthy person do? And the second thing, you need to become more open-minded on this journey, right? Now, notice how everything I said was all mental. We didn't even get into the physical aspect of getting in shape, right? We have one more mental and then we're gonna get into the physical. How to create a strong, why how do you create a strong why in your life what 
is, and this is the way how I created my why. This is my technique, this is the way how I do it. If you wanna take it from somebody else, by all means do it, but this is what has helped me develop a very strong why. What is it that makes you not want to become? What I mean by this, let me try to like explain it in a simpler way. I don't want to become the skinny, insecure kid who is made fun of. I was always picked on. I was never respected. And I hated that part. I, I hated how I was never taken serious. I hated how I could never defend myself, right? I'm not a person who dwells on the past. I'm not a person who wants to think about my mistakes and get mad about it. Man, I wish I could have done something. I can't do anything. The past has already happened. You got to move forward and grow and elevate in your life, right? But one thing that drives me is whenever I don't do something, Whenever I don't do a habit that I know I'm supposed to do, whether that's making some form of money, whether that's working out, whether that's going out there and networking and developing stronger relationships with myself or learning more knowledge on money, finances, health, psychology, philosophy, whatever it is. Whenever I don't do it, I always ask myself, by me not doing this, I'm getting closer and closer to the person I don't want to become. I'm getting closer and closer to the person who, that loser, that kid that I don't want to become. Just the aspect of me getting made fun of, the aspect of me being bullied, just gets me like, I can't be like that anymore. Truthfully, it, that's really the why that I have in my life. I don't want to be a loser. I don't want to be a kid, and loser is subjective. Everybody has their own definition of loser. A loser to me is somebody who never went after what they wanted, who decided to settle for something that they did not want in the first place, to let their fears hold them back, to let their negative emotions hold them back. That is not what I want in my life because the law of cause and effect in this world, cause and effect, just remember this one thing, the law of cause and effect, we're gonna use this effect, I don't know if it's the E or the A, listen, don't judge me on my grammar, but the cause of law and effect what you do will have an effect. It will have a consequence. Every action that you take will have a consequence, whether it's good or bad. If you decide not to go to the gym, there will be an effect from it. What is the effect? You're not gonna have a great body. You're gonna, have, you're gonna be very sluggish. You're probably gonna look at yourself in the mirror and doubt yourself. You're probably not gonna like what you see. Maybe you're gonna give yourself negative thoughts. So because of this one action, you got a consequence. The effect was negative. But what happens when you go to the gym? What happens when you actually take good care of your health? What happens when you just decide to drink a gallon of water? What happens when you decide to move your body more often and to actually take the steps that are needed to get yourself that attractive body? You're gonna feel great. That's the effect. Oh my gosh, I feel amazing. I feel better by myself. I feel like I can go after whatever I want. I know I can go after whatever I want because you decided to do the cause, which is what? Taking those steps of action that are needed to take and then you got an effect. Positive emotions, positive vibrations. Neo Knowledge, shout out to him. I started learning a lot more about frequencies and, and vibrations. You start getting positive frequencies, positive vibrations, right? Simply because you took that action. So how do you create a strong why? You need to know exactly what you don't want. What do you not want in your life? When you understand what you don't want in your life, you know exactly what you want. And you can constantly remind yourself, whenever I don't take this action, whenever I don't do what I have to do, guess what? I'm getting closer and closer to what? This, this red thing is the life you do not want. You don't want this life. You don't want the life of you being a loser. You don't want the life of you not being able to attract any girl that you want. You don't want the life to not be able to get the money that you've always wanted in your life or to have the body that you want. You don't want that life. You want a better life because that's why you're watching this video to begin with. How do you create a strong why? It's very simple. What is it that you do not want? What is it What is that makes you? I don't even know how to write. What is it that you don't want in your life? Just remember that. What is it that you do not want in your life? Constantly remind yourself every single day something that you do want, right? Create that why for yourself. Make it very strong for yourself. Make it something that brings some sort of drive, some sort of anger almost. Right? I'm not saying to be in a negative state of mind, but something that's just like, I can't have this. I want better. I know I'm destined for more, right? So those are the three steps.
Mental steps. Now we're gonna get into the physical steps. Finally, the, the sauce, the secret sauce. The sauce. Get clear with a routine. Get clear with the routine. Most people who go into the gym, they just think, I'm gonna go seven days a week, I'm gonna work out whatever muscle I wanna work out, I'm just gonna eat whatever it is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to eat healthy, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. They don't get the results, right? Because they're not very clear of exactly what is it that they need to do with their routine. How do you get very clear with your routine? We're gonna do this in black. Number one, what is your goal? Are you trying to lose weight? Let's say lose fat. Or build muscle? Can't even spell. Lose weight, lose fat, or build muscle. What is it that you're trying to achieve? All right. If you're trying to build muscle, and you're trying to get leaner, lose fat and build muscle at the same time, there's a different way you gotta train than somebody who is just trying to be a power lifter and get stronger and stronger. And doesn't really give a crap about their fat percentages, their body fat percentages, and the muscle that they have. All they care about is just being stronger. So you have to get very clear, what is that goal? Identify that goal for yourself. Only you know exactly what that goal is. For me, my goal was to build more muscle in my body, right? And by the time I did that, I decided to dirty bulk, so I'll go into the whole detail. I decided to go dirty bulking, which I do not recommend anybody to do, by the way. I think dirty bulking is one of the most useless and biggest waste of times that you can do when it comes to lifting healthier, right? I don't care if anybody's gonna come like, oh my God, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Bro, I did dirty bulking. I almost became pre-diabetic because I wasn't very, I, I wasn't controlling the type of food I was putting in my body. I was eating a bunch of junk food. And that resulted into me becoming almost pre-diabetic. Thank God that we got, got away from that. And now we're hundred times healthier with our body. All right. But my goal was to just build muscle. I just wanted to be bigger. I was 115 pounds and I wanted to get around 170 pounds, right? And that's when I did the dirty bulk and I dropped my body fat and now I'm around 165 pounds, 160 pounds, a hundred times leaner. And for those who don't believe, <laughs> for those who don't, <laughs> who don't believe, there's the progress, the abs right there. All right, but yeah, that's where, I, that's, that's, that's where I'm at in my current life right now when it comes to my health journey. So identify what your goal is. When you can have a clear goal, you know what to do. <coughs> Damn, <coughs> what to do. Number two, how do you get organized with your routine? Figure out how many days can you realistically train? I don't know if I spelled realistically right, but you understand the point. How many days can you realistically train? Most people, they think, oh, I'm gonna go to the gym, <coughs> excuse me, seven days a week. I'm gonna go to the gym seven days a week, I'm gonna work out for three hours straight, four hours straight, and I'm gonna get this dream body. Without them realizing, man, I can't even consistently stick with this routine. They try this routine, <coughs> damn, I'm coughing every single day. I'm coughing so much. <coughs> they try this routine, and guess what? They gave up in two weeks. It didn't work. So, be realistic. How many days can you realistically go to the gym? In my personal opinion, <coughs> I think the best days, the best amount of days somebody can actually go, let's actually get some water. Oh my God, that sounds sounds better. The best amount of days, preferably for somebody, in my opinion, that I know most majority of people can realistically go to, four days a week. I'm not saying you can't go to the gym seven days a week. If you can, great. If that's what you want to do, great. If you can realistically do that, great. But I prefer four days. Four days is pretty simple, pretty easy. Most people can do it. <coughs> so, you have to ask yourself, how many days can you actually do it? And only that's a question that you can ask yourself. I prefer four days. If you don't know how many, start off with four or three days. It's gonna be a hundred times easier for you. And what's more, most important in this game is being consistent with your routine. <coughs> Damn. 
how much coughing are we doing today? Number three, figure out how many meals do you want to eat? Just take it from me, three meals is pretty much enough. If you're trying to build yourself that attractive body, now if your goal is to become Mr. Olympia, become the greatest bodybuilder of all time, they're gonna have to eat a lot more food. But preferably, three meals is enough. The typical breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Most people say, oh, breakfast is not really a real thing. We created it. Yeah, we may have created it, but I actually enjoy, like to, I like to eat in the morning, right? I do fast, but I like to get one meal in in the morning. I don't really like to eat very late. I feel like when I eat very late a very big meal, I don't sleep very well and I wake up in the morning very sluggish and tired, right? But three meals is pretty much enough. Figure out how many meals you can eat. Three is enough, but if you want to eat more, then by all means, you can eat more. But three is definitely a great range for majority of people, all right? So let's go over this real quick. How do you create a clear routine? What is your goal? Once you identify your goal of what is it you're trying to achieve and make it very specific, they'll just make it generic. But like, I want to build 15 pounds of muscle in the next six months. It's a great goal. <coughs> You'll know exactly what to do. Number two, figure out how many days can you realistically go train? I recommend you to go at least three to four. That's pretty easy and simple to go. And number three, figure out how many meals can you eat? How many meals can you realistically eat in your day? The next part of how to actually get an organized, clear routine. Schedule each time for health habits. When you get very clear on your goal, there's gonna be a specific sort of habits you need to do every single day to get you closer and closer to that goal. How do you make it very simple and easy? Schedule the times. On my phone, I have alarms for each meal that I need to eat every single day. And I'll show you right now. I have three alarms, I eat three meals every single day. These are the alarms. Every single day, 10.30 a.m., 3 p.m., and 6.30 p.m. Those are the times I'm eating my three meals. I don't want to eat at nighttime. Like I said, if I eat a very big meal at night, I kind of feel very sluggish. If I am going to eat something at night, it's going to be very small. It's going to be very, <coughs> very healthy. <coughs> Damn, what is going on with me today? But it's going to be very healthy. Either fruits, something with protein. I'm, <coughs> I'm making sure it's not unhealthy. Damn, I don't even know what's going on with me. Now I even look like I'm the unhealthy one in this video, but I promise you, I don't know what it is. But schedule each time. Put alarms on your phone. What time are you gonna go to the gym? I prefer you go to the gym at the same time every single time it is a day for you to go lift weights, right? What time are you gonna eat your meals? When you have this all down packed, you don't have to run into the problem of forgetting. Oh, I, I forgot I gotta eat my meals. No, the alarm is gonna run, it's gonna turn on, it's gonna remind you, oh, I gotta eat my meals you're more likely to stay consistent and make more progress and do the habits that you need to do, right? So these are basically the four things. What is your goal? Once you identify your goal, you're gonna know what to do. Number two, figure out how many days can you realistically train? <coughs> Number three, how many meals can you realistically eat? And schedule each time for each health habit. You do this, you're gonna have a very clear routine. You're gonna be able to be way more consistent with your progress. The next habit. I'm enjoying this type of whiteboard um, teaching style. It's fire. Call it what you want. I'm not copying anybody. <laughs> next thing. Track your progress. You need to track your progress, preferably lifting like the weights you're lifting. Track the weight you're 
lifting. If there's one thing you get out from this video when it comes to the physical aspect of building that attractive body, track the weight you are lifting. I promise you, when you do this, next time you go into the gym, you're gonna know exactly where you left off and you know what you need to do to continue elevating. So let's say week one, you lifted 50 pounds for a barbell curl. You did 50 pounds for seven reps. You write this down. I have this down on a notion. You can do this on your notes app, right? If you're also interested and you want some of my, um, what's it called? Man, I almost just froze there. If you want some of my guides, you want my notion templates to help you with your fitness journey, the link will be in the description below, right? I have a workout tracker there that can help you track all your workouts. But 50 pounds barbell curls for seven reps, right? You did this on week one. Next time you train your bicep and you do that exact routine, let's say week two, your goal is to get more than seven reps with 50 pounds, right? Or increase the weight to 55. So week two, you'll do 50 pounds for what? Eight reps, eight to 10. You do it past seven, you've increased, you've done more than what you did last time, you're going to make it 100 times easier for you to grow and make your body go into new areas that has never been before, which is gonna to result to you building more muscle over time, right? But the only way you can track your progress, track the weight that you're lifting, you need to have a proper workout routine, right? You want a workout routine, link in the description below. I have a bunch of templates of all the workout routines that I actually use, the specific one that I use and I give all my clients to help them transform from being skinny, unesthetic, to actually having a very attractive body and finally building that confidence with themselves when it comes to the health aspect of their life, right? The link will be in the description below. But look, track your progress, track the weight that you're lifting. Week number one, 50 pounds, seven reps. Week number two, 50 pounds, eight to 10 reps. You do this for all your workouts, I can almost guarantee you, if you constantly increase every single week, whether that's more weight, more reps, and you have this all organized, you're gonna make way more progress than 99% of every single person that is in your gym, right? So that's it. Track your progress, track the weight that you're lifting on all your lifts. That is, the, that is the fourth thing that you need to do, the fifth thing actually, that you need to do when it comes to building your dream body. The next thing, eat the same food every day. Now hear me out for a second. Most people are gonna think, bro, how can you eat the same food every single day? Does it not taste good? That's why you need to eat food that actually tastes good, right? Eat the same food every single day. Make sure the food that you're eating is actually good. Make sure the food that you're eating is actually something that helps you get to your goals faster. I have a simple diet. What I eat for breakfast is an egg sandwich or an egg burrito. Simple. Egg sandwich or egg burrito filled with ham, a bunch of vegetables, cheese, simple. I don't try to overcomplicate it and I enjoy it and I put the right seasoning. Best breakfast I can eat. I can eat this all day long, right? That's for breakfast. For lunch, it's a Greek yogurt bowl. Greek yogurt with almonds, sunflower seeds, uh, walnuts, peanut, peanut butter. Simple. I don't try to overcomplicate it. And for dinner, I eat a lean protein with a healthy carb, whether it's potatoes, it could be quinoa, or it can be rice. A lean protein, ground beef, grilled chicken, and sometimes ground pork. That's it. Or, or pork chop. I don't try to overcomplicate it like that. And then a healthy fat. That's, that's just the framework. And I enjoy eating like this. You have to develop a diet that you're gonna enjoy. Make it very simple. Don't try to overcomplicate it. Simple foods. Don't try to be so like crazy with your diet, just how all these other people are like. Because the reality is nobody's trying to only eat salads all day long. Nobody's trying to eat all these fruit shakes all day long. I'm just being 100% real with you. I tried it. I had a diet one time in my life where I tried to eat no fat at all. 
I felt like crap. I literally was so skinny just trying to follow that diet. It didn't work out. Make your diet simple foods. The simple foods, the lean proteins, eggs. If you enjoy milk, milk in there, right? It's your diet. Create it in a way that works best for you. If you also want help on building that diet and you want some form of framework and some, some sort of accountability, I'll help you build an attractive body in six months. Look in the description below, right? So, eat the same food every single day. Simple foods, if you can do that, you're not gonna have any problem at all. A framework that I use actually, if you wanna start building your diet and you don't know where to start, ask yourself if you can only eat only eat 15 foods for the rest of life what will it be what will it be if you can only eat 15 foods for the rest of your life, what would it be? All right? List that all down. And it has to be healthy. Obviously, don't just say, I'm going to eat McDonald's. Make it clear. 15 foods that you'll eat for the rest of your life. Make it on the list. And from this list, try to create different meals from it. This is exactly how I created the framework for me on the diet that I currently have. And I'm eating consistently every single day for the past month. List out those 15 foods whatever it is, 15. And then create different meals. That's it. Different meals from it. Try it out. Experiment. Do you like this? Mm, you don't like it? Okay, let's switch it off for something else, right? But you're going to have a foundation. You're going to have some sort of basic foundation for yourself when it comes to consistently eating a diet that help you build your attractive body. I'm here to tell you right now, all the crazy diets that social media tries to give you, all those unique vegan, uh, keto, whatever other type of diet out there that people are trying to portray, it may sound cool doing it, but if you cannot stick with it in the long run, there's no point of you doing it, right? The best diet is the one that you can stick to for the rest of your life. Remember that. Write that down, comment it, comment it on the video so people can read it. The best diet is the one that you can stick to for the rest of your life. Doesn't matter what it is. The best diet is the one that you can stick to for the rest of your life. That's what it is. The final aspect, and this is the most important thing you need to realize. I'm gonna write this very huge. Give yourself time. Uh, I'm gonna look, I don't even care. Whatever, this is a clock, okay? A clock. Give yourself time. Give yourself time on this journey of you building your attractive body. Most people think in a week, in a month, you have to have your body. You have to have this attractive body or nothing is gonna work. Bro, it took me four to five years of going through trial and error and learning and learning to finally get to the point where I'm at today and I'm still growing and growing and making mistakes and still learning and elevating myself more and more, learning from my mistakes, learning from people ahead of me, right? Give yourself time. This is a journey, right? Somebody told me in the gym once, it's okay to lift a little bit lighter. For example, I'm 20 years old. Most people today want to ego lift. They want to lift very heavy weights. They want to try to push past their limits and go for those one rep maxes. He said, bro, you're in this for the long run. Fitness is not a chore for a short period of time. Fitness, health, building an attractive body is something for the rest of your life. It's something you're gonna do until the day you're no longer here on this planet. It's okay if you lift a little bit light today. It's okay if you have to fix your form. It's okay if you have to start over on a new workout routine. It's okay. This is a lifelong journey at the end of the day. The end goal that everybody's trying to achieve when it comes to building an attractive body, it's just being healthy. It's just being able to function, enjoy your life, have the energy to do the things that you want, right? Maybe your goal is not to become Mr. Olympia. Maybe your goal is not to become the next David Lade, whatever it is, whatever fitness influencer is out there. Your goal is probably not to become that, 
right? Because deep down inside, the reason why you're doing all of this is simply because you want to feel good. You want to feel better about yourself. You want to be confident with yourself. You want to feel great looking at what you see in the mirror and having all the great things in life come to you because you're working on yourself in the health aspect of your life, right? Give yourself time. It's going to take time. And that's not a bad thing. Time allows you to grow. Time allows you to make mistakes. Time allows you to grow from your mistakes and become even better. The person who's trying to rush their progress never really makes it. And as a matter of fact, even if they rushed it and they did everything they can, right? Those people who try to do these crazy diets to try to lose so much weight, maybe they lost the weight. But guess what? What happens? They gain it all back because they try to do something that they know they couldn't stick to for the long run. This is a journey for you to stay in the long run. If you give yourself time, and you're patient with it, you continue to grow, you continue to track your progress, you continue to work on a routine that you know you can stay consistent with, that you start to keep yourself accountable by putting timers on your phone. Whatever it is, I can almost guarantee you, you're gonna see the results that you're looking for, right? So remember, this is something where it's a, a, a personal development journey. You don't have to try to become the best physically attractive person tomorrow. Give yourself time, enjoy the journey, and I can almost guarantee you, you will build that attractive body because this is exactly what I did. I know it works because I've done it with my clients as well. They've gotten their great results. If you want to work with me and you want to build that attractive body, you want that accountability, you want somebody to be there with you to help you transform yourself into somebody greater with your life and realize the potential that you have within, you already know, link in the description. Thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. I really appreciate this, guys. I'm going to be doing this new style of videos as well. If you have any sort of ideas, any sort of knowledge that you want to learn. I've been growing these last few months. I'm ready to give that knowledge out for you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.